All right, so now the fire drill, the the hand drill. Oh look, I got a moth here. Ah, my friend, the little moth. You can't really see him, maybe, but all well, my friends everywhere. Your inner being channel. This here is called a mullen, and you can find this particular um, plant out where there is an open area. So you won't find it amongst uh, heavy forested uh, trees. You'd have to go out into the open somewhere. This will uh, dry up on its own, and I usually pick these in the in the spring when I start to go out for my walk or my run. I will, uh, I'll notice these all dried up and then I, you just plunk them out of the ground. And this is what I mean, like they, there's different sizes. And some people like to have their hand drill to be very, very thin. This one is pretty thin, but it's in line with my old stick here. So this is my old stick. This is the one I was using, but unfortunately, you know, it doesn't last forever because when you when you uh, grind down to the end, you'll see that it actually starts to shrink after a while. So it was here, then it'll start to shrink because you use it up. But that's the thing is like when you're when you're out there, it's nice to just maybe um, collect some and just have it somewhere where you can have access to it. Now. Um, I'm going to prepare this one here. This is, I guess it's a poplar. I'm not too um, familiar with the names of all these trees. I see them, but I don't know the names of them all. But, uh, so I'm just gonna process this one down so that it won't hurt my hand anymore. This is one that was sticking up out of the ground, literally dead, and so I used it. Now this is cedar. This is a cedar stick, and I'm going to Use that as my hearth, which is the uh, the, the bottom where we're going to uh, yeah we're going to use this as our baseboard. That's what I'm trying to think of. All right, my handy dandy knife sheath that I made, and uh, so we'll get to it. Just going to process it down. those notches. So what, the way I like to do this is I like to just take easy glides as opposed to really scraping it because especially at the, the knots you, you want to or you have um, you're tempted to really get out there and scratch at it like really hard but then you end up digging in a hole sometimes so for me you know if you have a, a lightweight knife you just make multiple easy passes like that. That's the way I choose to do it. But one thing I've definitely learned is that every bushcrafter has their own method. So if you're out there looking at techniques for bushcrafting, you know, don't just take one person's advice. Um, you know, get opinions from everywhere and see which ones work best for you and that's really the key is once you have mastered something in a way that works for you, you just hold on to that. Yeah, I tell you the mosquitoes are out. This is an attempt that I did a while ago. I'm using the mullen and I'm starting in the sitting down position. It, it doesn't really work for me that much. And what we're doing at first is you have to create an indentation into the wood. 
you take your knife and you create a V groove going up into the center of that indentation that you created. This will collect the dust, keeping it hot and smoking, and eventually that's where your amber is going to be created. So now going back and forth like this, it takes a lot, lot out on your arms. You're actually going to be using muscles that you're not used to doing, which is why it takes a while to practice. And also at the same time, having that back and forth motion is not something that you're used to doing as you're pushing downwards. And even though it's smoking, bam, oh, no. that's what happens to me when I'm sitting down in this position. So I have to change my position here. And this is this, this is my go to position here. You do have to stop just to see what's happening with the smoke. Do not take the spindle out. Just hold it there in place and see what happens. If the smoke goes away, then you have to continue on. If the smoke stays, then you most likely have an amber. And here we have the little spark. Now that tinder is made up of grass and bark and a lot of small little things that are just dry. It has to be dry, but here's the thing. At this point here, a lot of people like to rush. Don't rush. Just take your time that amber is going to continue to smoke for a little while. So you actually do have some time. You just gently blow on there. And as long as there's smoke, you have an opportunity. It's, it's going. So you keep blowing and you keep blowing. In this case here, my tinder was a little bit damp, so it didn't want to ignite right away. And all that smoke is just going in my face. But once it ignites, you're good. And then the smoke starts to dissipate. And uh, hopefully you've prepared yourself some twigs already ahead of time. And then you just layer them on and you're good to go. Success, you have yourself a fire. So it takes some practice, but it's definitely worth it. And what an accomplishment it feels when you have done it. Anyway, thank you very much, and until next time, take care, and I wish you well. Thank you for watching.